David assembled at Jerusalem all the officials of Israel, the officials of the tribes, the officers of the divisions that serve the king, the commanders of thousands, the commanders of hundreds, the stewards of all the property and cattle of the king and his sons, together with the palace officials, the mighty men, and all the seasoned warriors. Then King David rose to his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. I had it in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God, and I made preparations for building. But God said to me, You may not build a house for my name, for you are a warrior and have shed blood. Yet the Lord God of Israel chose me from all my father's house to be king over Israel forever, for he chose Judah as leader. And in the house of Judah, my father's house, and among my father's sons, he took pleasure in me to make me king over all Israel. And of all my sons, for the Lord has given me many sons, he has chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. He said to me, It is Solomon, your son, who shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father." I will establish his kingdom forever, if he continues resolute in keeping my commandments and my ordinances, as he is today. Now therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the assembly of the Lord, and in the hearing of our God, observe and seek out all the commandments of the Lord your God, that you may possess this good land, and leave it for an inheritance to your children after you forever. And you, Solomon, my son, know the God of your father, and serve him with a whole heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts, and understands every plan and thought. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Take heed now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong, and do it. Then David gave Solomon his son the plan of the vestibule of the temple, and of its houses, its treasuries, its upper rooms, and its inner chambers, and of the room for the mercy seat and the plan of all he had in mind for the courts of the houses of the Lord. All the surrounding chambers, the treasuries of the house of God, and the treasuries for dedicated gifts, for the divisions of the priests and of the Levites, and all the work of the service in the house of the Lord, for all the vessels for the service in the house of the Lord, the weight of gold for all golden vessels for each service, the weight of silver vessels for each service, the weight of the golden lampstands and their lamps, the weight of gold for each lampstand and its lamps, the weight of silver for a lampstand and its lamps, according to the use of each lampstand in the service, the weight of gold for each table for the showbread, the silver for the silver tables, and pure gold for the forks, the basins, and the cups, for the golden bowls, and the weight of each, for the silver bowls, and the weight of each, for the altar of incense made of refined gold, and its weight, also his plan for the golden chariot of the cherubim that spread their wings and covered the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. All this he made clear by the writing from the hand of the Lord concerning it, all the work to be done according to the plan. Then David said to Solomon his son, Be strong and of good courage, and do it. Fear not, be not dismayed, for the Lord God, even my God, is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the house of the Lord is finished. And behold, the divisions of the priests and the Levites for all the service of the house of God, and with you in all the work will be every willing man who has skill for any kind of service. Also the officers and all the people will be holy at your command. And David the king said to all the assembly, Solomon my son, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced, and the work is great, for the palace will not be for man, but for the Lord God. So I have provided for the house of my God, so far as I was able the gold for the things of gold, the silver for the things of silver, and the bronze for the things of bronze, the iron for the things of iron, and wood for the things of wood, besides great quantities of onyx and stones for setting, antimony, colored stones, all sorts of precious stones and marble. Moreover, in addition to all that I have provided for the holy house, I have a treasure of my own, of gold and silver, and because of my devotion to the house of my God, I give it to the house of my God. 3,000 talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, and 7,000 talents of refined silver, for overlaying the walls of the house, and for all the work to be done by craftsmen, gold for the things of gold, and silver for the things of silver. Who then will offer willingly, consecrating himself today to the Lord? 
Then the heads of fathers' houses made their free will offerings, as did also the leaders of the tribes, the commanders of thousands and of hundreds, and the officers over the king's work. They gave for the service of the house of God five thousand talents and ten thousand derricks of gold, ten thousand talents of silver, eighteen thousand talents of bronze, and a hundred thousand talents of iron. And whoever had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord, in the care of Jehiel the Gershonite. Then the people rejoiced because these had given willingly, for with a whole heart they had offered freely to the Lord. David the king also rejoiced greatly. Therefore David blessed the Lord in the presence of all the assembly. And David said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of Israel our Father, for ever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, and the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. But who am I, and what is my people, that we should be able thus to offer willingly? For all things come from you, and of your own have we given you. For we are strangers before you, and sojourners, as our fathers were. Our days on earth are like a shadow, and there is no abiding. O Lord our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a house, for your holy name comes from your hand, and is all your own. I know, my God, that you try the heart, and have pleasure in uprightness. In the uprightness of my heart I have freely offered all these things, and now I have seen your people, who are present here, offering freely and joyously to you. O Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, our fathers, keep forever such purposes and thoughts in the hearts of your people, and direct their hearts toward you. Grant to Solomon, my son, that with a whole heart he may keep your commandments, your covenants, and your statutes, performing all, and that he may build the palace for which I have made provision. Then David said to all the assembly, Bless the Lord your God. And all the assembly blessed the Lord, the God of their fathers, and bowed their heads, and worshipped the Lord, and did obeisance to the king. And they performed sacrifices to the Lord, and on the next day offered burnt offerings to the Lord, a thousand bulls, a thousand rams, and a thousand lambs, with their drink offerings, and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel. And they ate and drank before the Lord on that day with great gladness. And they made Solomon the son of David king the second time, and they anointed him as prince for the Lord, and Zadok as priest. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king instead of David his father, and he prospered, and all Israel obeyed him. All the leaders and the mighty men, and also all the sons of King David, pledged their allegiance to King Solomon. And the Lord gave Solomon great repute in the sight of all Israel, and bestowed upon him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. Thus David, the son of Jesse, reigned over all Israel. The time that he reigned over Israel was forty years. He reigned seven years in Hebron, and thirty-three years in Jerusalem. Then he died in a good old age, full of days, riches, and honor. And Solomon his son reigned in his stead. Now the acts of King David, from first to last, are written in the chronicles of Samuel the seer, and in the chronicles of Nathan the prophet, and in the chronicles of Gad the seer, with accounts of all his rule and his might, and of the circumstances that came upon him, and upon Israel, and upon all the kingdoms of the countries. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth, by understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge the deeps broke forth, and the clouds dropped down the dew. My son, keep sound wisdom and discretion. Let them not escape from your sight, and they will be life for your soul, and adornment for your neck. Then you will walk on your way securely, and your foot will not stumble. If you sit down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden panic, or of the ruin of the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence, and will keep your foot from being caught. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come again. Tomorrow I will give it, when you have it with you. Do not plan evil against your neighbor who dwells trustingly beside you. Do not contend with a man for no reason, when he has done you no harm. Do not envy a man of violence, and do not choose any of his ways. For the perverse man is an abomination to the Lord, 
but the upright are in his confidence. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the abode of the righteousness. Toward the scorners he is scornful, but to the humble he shows favor. The wise will inherit honor, but fools get disgrace. But there was a man named Simon who had previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the nation of Samaria, saying that he himself was somebody great. They all listened to him, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is that power of God which is called great. And they listened to him because for a long time he had amazed them with his magic. But when they believed Philip, as he preached good news about the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Even Simon himself believed, and after being baptized, he continued with Philip. And seeing signs and great miracles performed, he was amazed. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that any one on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, Your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And Simon answered, Pray for me to the Lord that nothing of what you have said may come upon me. Now when they had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel to many villages of the Samaritans. Sometimes we just need to acknowledge our smallness and God's greatness. David sets a great example for us when he prays, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, and the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty. David shows us that God alone possesses all the things that human kings seek after. Likewise, he acknowledges God's ownership of everything. All that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. But David goes further, pointing out that all the sacrifices he and the people of Israel make to the Lord have their origin in him. For all things come from you, and of your own heart we have given you. All this abundance that we have provided for building you a house, for your holy name comes from your hand and is all your own. Essentially, he is saying that no matter what we give to God, it was originally from God in the first place. We cannot obtain the gift of God with money, as Simon Magus tries to do. We can only receive the Spirit as a gift and then give the gifts he gives us back to him. In what ways do you receive from God and give back to him?